Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. Uh, it's a segment where we tell you what happened today in history. And we're going back to the year 2004, and it was on this day in history, the 1st of April, that uh, Google announced the launch of Gmail. Yes, your favorite, you know, email application. So it was this day in history, it was launched. Google had announced uh, the launch of this, but people thought it was a hoax. They didn't believe this until April 1st, you know, this was launched. And that was because uh, the release of this, of this application was released in a memo, and the memo was dated April 14th, and it was not yet April 14th, so he thought this was a hoax until, you know, Google released Gmail. And it, was, it became quite popular because unlike other, you know, applications before then, Google allowed people using Gmail to use tabs to categorize their emails. There's, you know, the inbox, there's a sense, there's a draft, there are tabs. You can organize your email based on priority and all of that. Also, Gmail incorporated a search bar for you to search for your email. So if Plus TV Africa sent you an email um, two years ago, you can go on your search bar, anti Plus TV Africa, and all communication, including Plus TV Africa, would appear. So that was revolutionary. There was nothing like that at the time. Also, uh, as at uh, March 2015, Gmail interface supports 72 language and uh, it had 1.5 billion active users worldwide by October 2019. And we know that it was in 2009 by July 7th that they had you know, concluded the testing phase of Gmail and you know, it officially became public. Gmail was ranked second in PC World 100, 100 best products of 2005, just behind Firefox. Yes. All right. Um, for those of us who are old enough, uh, what we remember and what we started with was uh, Yahoo Mail. Yes. Um, and I remember, you know, Yahoo Messenger. There was a lot of you oh, know, other, Yahoo Messenger. Um, um, <laughs> you know, um, you know, you know, things that Yahoo, you know, did offer back then. That were really, and there are still people who have Yahoo Mail till today. I still have a Yahoo. Um, it started in 1997, um, apparently, um, sometime in October 1997. Um, um, and, you know, today still has more than 200 million active users. Um, I still know people here in Nigeria that still use Yahoo Mail. But trust um, me, they have other mails like a Gmail as a backup. Yeah, or yeah uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, Gmail, you know, from 2004, I believe, you know, till now has, you know, gotten 1.5 billion, you know, active users. And so, you know, it really just tells about, uh, you know, about development, software development and, you know, the you know, need to continue to improve. There's always going to be one better, you know, so if you're not improving on your, your application or on your product, there's going to be somebody who's going to bring out something better or something more convenient to you, mm -hmm. something that has, you know, more space uh, for users. And so that's really, you know, where, you know, the, um, you know, the angle that I'm really sharing mm -hmm. um, um, about. But I and remember Yahoo Mail yes. and it was pretty interesting using it. And apart from the fact that, you know, that the, the, the press release of, you know, the launch of Gmail, was dated, you know, far, far into the month. Another reason people didn't believe because it was announced on April 1st. And today, as we know, it's popularly known as April Fool's Day. Yes. For some people already sent me fake wedding invitation cards. <laughs> I opened it, sent my, my, here's my wedding invitation. I opened it and said, <laughs> you have just been fooled. So people thought, oh, April Fool, Google is trying to mess with us. But it turned out to be, you know, legit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Moving away from Gmail now, let's talk about something else that, has, that starts with a G, but uh, now we're talking Marvin Gaye. If you remember some of those records from the 80s, uh, let's get it on, sexual healing and the likes. Are you going to sing um, some of the songs no, for I'm us? Not. No, I'm not. How about the choreography? I practice? remember when I was on radio, this song was banned, actually. You can't play sexual healing on the radio. But you um, can say sexual healing yes, on the you TV. Can. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Okay, you can do a cover <laughs> right now on the TV. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> All right, so yes, he was um, an American musician who gained worldwide fame for his work with Motown, uh, Motown Records. On this day, April 1st, 1984, he was shot by his father, Marvin Gaye Sr., um, at their house in Los Angeles. He was shot three times following an altercation with his father after he intervened in an argument between the, uh, his parents. Uh, the wounds were fatal, and he died, you know, on the same day. He, uh, his death, you know, according to reports, inspired several musical, musical tributes over the years, including recollection of the incidents leading to his death. 
uh, Marvin Gaye Sr., his father now, was a Christian minister. He was a strict disciplinarian and often physically punished his children. And, you know, there's also reports that in days prior to his death, Gaye's parents had arguments mainly over a misplaced insurance policy letter. Um, um, well, you know, not really not so much, you know, that needs to be added uh, to this. There's also, you know, details about, you know, where the bullets hit and, you know, why, you know, all of them were fatal and why he couldn't survive um, this. But um, the, the, you know, things to take out of this, you know, really are uh, with regards parenting. There was conspiracy theories that emerged after that that said that uh, Marvin Gaye was shot because his father or he had a problem with his father, um, you know, knowing that he was gay, um, an actual gay. Um, I, I have no confirmation, you know, with regards to that. I believe that's um, a conspiracy theory because yes. his name is G-A-Y-E. Yes, exactly. Uh, his father is gay also, if that's, if that's what you're talking about. His father's name is also gay, if that's what the problem is. But, you know, that was a conspiracy theory. Um, but, you know, from reading the story now, you can also see that um, he tried to step in, according to the story, he tried to step in, you know, while his parents were having a fight and eventually, you know, lost his life in the process. Uh, he was killed by his own father. So and there's also the part where... Dates. Yeah, is that a, you know, is that a moral lesson? no, that's not a moral. So, so there's another thing, you know, uh, where where it also says that his father uh, was a strict disciplinarian and was a church leader, or, you know, you know, very, very uh, strong Christian. There is also that part, you know, that you know, I feel Spare needs to be mentioned. The child. Um, sometimes people take you too far, True. and that's it, you know, and that's where you know some of the narratives with regards to bad parenting and bad fathers always comes in, you know, when people always grow up and say, oh, I'm going to go buy my mom a car, buy my mom a house, uh, because, you know, the, the love of the mother's love, you know, is always expressed in a different way. Mm -hmm. A lot of fathers get it entirely wrong with the idea of discipline and with the idea of training a child. They, you know, He's take it violence. way too far. Exactly. Uh, there's, you know, some of those experiences that Nigerians here have seen as normal with regards to disciplining a child. I know a friend who, um, his father got so frustrated at some point, you know, because he was in, t in court a stubborn child, and his father called soldiers, you know, to beat him up, um, you know, one Christmas uh, morning, or Christmas night, actually. Um, so there is, you know, those angles also. Um, wh who do you call a Christian, you know, an unstrong disciplinarian? You know, wh what does the Christian faith really then teach you? Um, uh, you know, when, and do you bring back home that level of anger and that level of, you know, of hate and the level of, um, you know, lack of control for your own emotions? So rest in peace to Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. um, after his death, he was, I uh, think, named, um, he was also given posthumous awards um, um, a few other times after his death. And his music will continue to live forever. Yes. And I feel that more, a lot, you know, fathers should learn, you know, from this story, um, um, you know, the different angles to it that parenting needs to be taught from. Yeah. So, so talking about the parenting, really, you know, reading about the confession of Marvin Gaye's father, you know, he shot him twice, right? And he went on to say that uh, he didn't mean to do it. If he could bring him back, he would. He was afraid. He didn't want him to get hurt. And he just wished he could step through the door right now. But when you pull the trigger, you pull the trigger. And when the person's gone, the person's gone. Absolutely. <sighs> Sadly. All right. Um, that's all we have for you today. Today in uh, history, I went back to 1984 and told you about the death of one of uh, Black America's and uh, the world's most famous singers, Marvin Gaye. And I told you about when Gmail was launched by Google. This day in history, April 1st, 20, um, 2004. Uh, do we wish our viewers April Fool's Day? Mm -hmm. Or do or we, we encourage you not to get fooled? We probably shouldn't have showed up to work today. Exactly! <laughs> we shouldn't have! <laughs> My boss, we didn't mean that anyway. time. <laughs> Stay with us. We're getting into our first major conversation for today. Uh, of course, uh, the stimulus package that has been proposed. Uh, there's so much I will talk about. The stimulus package being you know, mentioned by uh, former Lagos State Governor Bola Tinubu and how that really would work in Nigeria's government today. He said that uh, you know, his advice to President Muhammadu Buhari was to move away from austerity measures and actually push for stimulus packages. We're also going to be having a review and, of course, uh, a live report from the NARD strike. Jacinta Obiku, Plus TV reporter, is on ground waiting and we'll be speaking with her. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <laughs>